Guardian released reports on how Facebook moderates content uh, moderators to keep these digital public spaces from the worst the internet. Its confidential blue book on sex, violence, and terrorism was recently leaked. Organizing Facebook, a publisher of content, or is it a platform? In the first half of the program, we looked at content moderation, what Facebook's policies say about the organization. Now we're going to look at the human angle, examining the role of the content moderator. Many social media users just assume that content moderation is automated, that when an inappropriate image or video is uploaded to the net, a computer removes it, whereas in reality, there are reportedly more than 150,000 content moderators worldwide working today. The job description involves sifting through images, videos, and text, assessing whether or not the content contravenes the platform's policies, and the work can take its toll. In December of last year, two Microsoft employees sued the company, saying that years of content moderating left them with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It can be unpleasant work, but necessary, and many social media companies based in the West now outsource it to places like the Philippines or India. But the question is, do they do that responsibly? Or do they just take advantage of the cheap labor with little consideration for the laborer? The Listening Post's Nick Muirhead now on the invisible workers scrubbing the net, deciding what you do or do not see, the content moderators. When most people think about social media, I think the last thing they think about is what they don't see. And when we talk about content moderation, we're actually talking about that material that uh, may either never make it to a platform or may be there for a period of time and then be rescinded. So it's kind of difficult to ask people what they think of the absence. But when I do talk to people about this topic, usually two things happen. The first thing is that they say, huh, I never thought about that. And then the second thing they say is, don't computers do that? No, for the most part, computers don't do that. Automated content moderation does exist, but it's in its early stages of development. The technology is still incapable of making complex judgments on an image or a video. You need humans for that, and a lot of them. Sanitizing your newsfeed, shielding you from the horrors posted online every day. Obviously, huge tech companies are very, very secretive about this. They don't want you to know that there's other people who possibly could be looking at your photos, that there is people involved in the viewing of, you know, nasty material. The other aspect is the security part of it. So as a content moderator, you would have access to different kind of sensitive data or users' uh, personal data, which should not be exposed to the outside world. There's non-disclosure agreements that uh, employees sign when they get involved in this type of work. They're uh, broad and they're written by good lawyers in large law firms. And I think it's, it's a very intimidating thing when you realize that you have information that needs to be imparted to the community and you've signed one of these things. And it, it sort of precludes these questions that, that people might ask about that process. And that really gives the platform free reign to not really have to a answer to the general public in terms of what is removed. The second thing is that uh, the issue of, of worker well-being is largely out of sight and out of mind under this regime of secrecy. And the simple fact is that content moderation work puts workers in front of extremely difficult and disturbing material as a precondition of their job. That's what the plaintiffs in a legal case against Microsoft contend. Henry Soto and Greg Blarett say that they were not warned about the effect that moderating online content could have on their welfare. Their lawsuit argues that the job required them to witness horrible brutality, murder, indescribable sexual assaults, videos of humans dying, material designed to entertain the most twisted and sick-minded people in the world. Under US federal law, Microsoft has to remove and report this kind of material. So it has little choice but to employ content moderators. The company refutes the lawsuit saying that the work is difficult, but critically important to a safer and more trusted internet. And the health and safety of its employees who do this work is its top priority. We spoke to one of the plaintiff's attorney about the effect that the work had on his client. It resulted in disassociations at times, hallucinations at times, other times just extreme anxiety and depression. 
One of the big things that it does, uh, we've talked to a lot of content moderators other than Henry and Greg in our investigation, and what we've found is that it creates these videos in their brains of these things that they've seen, and they go about their community and there are triggers like seeing children or seeing knives in the kitchen or seeing a computer will trigger these memories and they will see these things in their heads over and over and over again. Despite the fact that many, many of the people who do moderation are contract laborers, the two workers who are alleging harm in the Microsoft case were actually full-time Microsoft employees and they continue to be to date. Both of them are actually on, on disability but retain their status as Microsoft employees. So uh, it, while in some other cases it may be possible for a platform or firm to uh, reasonably argue that a harmed employee wasn't actually uh, an employee of their, their own, in this case Microsoft is not going to be able to uh, make that claim. Which explains at least in part why a growing number of tech companies outsource their content moderation work or floating it to external contractors. That not only limits their legal liability, it also distances them from the anti-social side of social media. And to add another degree of separation, another kind of distancing, much of that outsourced work doesn't go to contractors in the US, it's sent offshore. How many of you have some work experience? Everyone are fresh, yes. this is your first job. The Moderators is a short film released last month that follows a group of new recruits at a content moderation company in the Indian city of Bangalore. They are told that the job requires them to assess 2,000 images per hour. That's roughly 33 images per minute, more than one every two seconds. Then come the kinds of images that they will moderate. And as the training progresses, the examples become more unsettling starting with nudity and going all the way through to child pornography and graphic bodily harm. Kieran Cassidy co-produced the film. He said that one of the first things that jumped out at him was just how normal, how innocuous the setting was. We've all worked in offices before. Like you've walked down, you've seen people come in, you put their lunchbox on their desk, their backpack on their back. We all like know what an office is like. I think it's that familiarity with then combined with what some people are looking at this graphic material that makes it quite extraordinary. So it's quite familiar and then it's completely and utterly unique. The financial incentives behind outsourcing lead all kinds of businesses and not just tech companies to take advantage of cheap labour forces overseas and not just India's. But it's the nature of the work and the fact that content moderation is clouded in secrecy that fuels suspicions that this is a case of rich companies farming out their psychological trauma to the developing world. We put that to the CEO of the company featured in the moderators. He admits that there are areas of the job that are difficult, but maintains that his company provides the necessary training and counselling. When a moderator joins us, we explain them about the job profile. Along with that, we try to explain them what moderation is all about. If there is something which is bad, you don't like seeing, you can just walk down to our counsellor and say, okay, I do not prefer seeing this, and maybe you can move into a different project. So we are here doing content moderation for seven years. Until date, we have not come across even a single incident where an employee walks up to us and says that he is not comfortable with it. The question about it is, is how much do we really know? Like this film is based on a small company in Bangalore. I think there's a lot of questions about what else, what other companies are doing, what are the conditions that these people are working on, how much the treadmill is turning. I just think within the industry itself there's just huge question marks. These internet service providers and tech companies make billions of dollars, but like a lot of products, there's a toxic byproduct. And that toxic byproduct needs to be managed and the employees that work with that toxic byproduct need to be protected.